All right, so this is a book problem from the Chang Chemistry textbook, and this is from 6.38, so chapter six problem. Um, and this is a great problem, I really like this problem, so I'm gonna walk you through how to do this problem and what we're sort of be looking for. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, you know, try to organize the information that, that's given. So 85 milliliters of 0.9 molar HCl is mixed with 85 milliliters of 0.9 molar KOH. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna think about the chemical reaction that's gonna be occurring here. HCl, we're gonna assume that that's aqueous plus KOH. Again, aqueous goes to H2O. This is gonna be a neutralization reaction so I can recognize a strong acid and a strong base. And then I will get KCl as another byproduct. We have 85 milliliters of each. So I will just write 85 milliliters, 0 0.900 molar. 85.0 milliliters, 0 0.900 molar. And it might seem sort of redundant to be organizing your information like this or writing this out, but it's really, really helpful, I think, as we go through the problem. So I'd really encourage you to do that. So we're gonna mix this stuff together in a constant pressure calorimeter. So we're gonna be doing a calorimetry problem. It has a heat capacity of 325 joules over degrees Celsius. So that is what we consider to be a C value. So Maybe over here to the side, I'll write C equals 325 joules over degrees Celsius, just to organize that. If the initial temperature of both solutions are the same, so that's gonna be my T initial equals 18.24 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature of the mixed solution? So what we're looking for is T final. So I'm gonna sort of highlight that. That is what my, my goal is for this problem. The heat of neutralization is minus 56.2 kilojoules per mole. That's for this reaction. So that is the delta H for this reaction, minus 56.2 <clears throat> excuse me, kilojoules. And then assume the density and specific heat of the solutions are the, are the same as those for water. So specific heat for water, that's gonna be S equals 4.184 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. And then my density is gonna equal one gram per milliliter. So that is all the, oh, you can't see that density, but just scoot that up. So that is all the information um, from the problem. So I spent the first two minutes just organizing the information, getting ready to do the problem, not even not even worrying about, you know, actually doing any calculations or anything. So now let's, let's do that, let's worry about that. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert both of these into moles. Really, we only need to do one of them because I can tell that they're the same, essentially. So that's gonna give me 0 0.0765 moles of both. Um, and then I'm going to, to use this information to figure out, well, when I do that mixing, when I mix these two things together, how much energy is gonna be released? And I wanna, I wanna think about that because I've got that information, um, you know, this minus 56.2 kilojoules, that's per mole. Uh, so if I've got 0 0.0765 moles, then I'm just gonna multiply that by minus 56.2 kilojoules over one mole, and that value is gonna be um, minus 4.2993 kilojoules. So what this represents, this represents the amount of energy released, so let's sort of annotate that, energy released by the chemical reaction, or we might call that the system. So by the chemical reaction, when I mix these HCl and KOH solutions together, that amount of energy is gonna be released, minus 4.2993 kilojoules. And that amount of energy, it's going to be then applied to the calorimeter and the actual water solutions that, that those you know, solutions make up. So if I draw a little picture here, this is gonna be my, my calorimeter with my solution. I'm gonna have 85 plus 85 milliliters, so I'm gonna have 170 milliliters total. I've mixed my two solutions together in there. The initial temperature is gonna be this 18.24 degrees Celsius. The specific heat and density, that's gonna be for this, this solution that I have in, in my um, calorimeter. And then this other piece of information, it's really telling us what the heat capacity of the, the walls of the calorimeter are. So we're gonna say that that C equals 325 joules over degrees Celsius. So it's gonna take a little bit of energy to heat up the actual walls of the calorimeter as well. So now we're gonna apply this energy to the actual calorimeter. So the way that I would do that is first I'm gonna change the sign. I'm gonna say positive 4.2993 kilojoules 
is absorbed by the calorimeter. So this same amount of energy that is evolved is gonna be absorbed by the calorimeter, and then we're gonna apply that to change the temperature and figure out what the final temperature is gonna be. So to do that, what I would do is I'm gonna convert this 4.2993 into joules. That would be 4,299.3 joules of energy. And that's gonna equal my, you know, water solution absorbing that energy and also the calorimeter absorbing the energy as well. So that's gonna equal 4.184. So here I'm using the Q equals SM delta T type equation. 170 is gonna be my mass, so that's gonna be the mass of the water, uh, one gram per milliliter, so 170 milliliters, 170 grams. And then I'm gonna put in delta T. So we could do T final minus T initial, but I think for me, I always just like doing delta T if we can. Now, there's gonna be another component to this equation. So this equation here, so let's cover this up as that plus, this equation here would be if all the energy is applied directly to the calorimeter, but in fact, we are directly to, excuse me, directly to the water. But in fact, we also have to take into account this calorimetry bit. So the heat capacity for the calorimeter is 325 joules over a degree Celsius. So that's gonna have to change temperature as well. And we're gonna assume that that has the same initial temperature. So now I'm gonna solve this equation for delta T and I get a value of 4.15. And then to find my T final, I'm just gonna add 4.15 to my T initial. So T final should be, you know, T initial plus um, however much the temperature goes up, and that is 22.39 degrees Celsius. And that's it. All right, hope that that makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any other questions.